welcome back to the channel. So we're about 70 kilometers away from Port Bergy at the moment, just in the farming area. It's all full to the brim of crops around here, just rice and mace, all that sort of stuff. Wild, wild place and wild people. Road's a bit knackered like, hopefully it'll um, be all right most of the way along here, but about, about the last hundred odd kilometer is a um, pretty bad road. I think there might be um, a market day around here somewhere today. There seems to be a lot of zebu carts going across, going around, cows and carts. With, um, oh, there we go, it is a market day. Nice. I would stop and buy some stuff because buying like rice and stuff like that around here is a lot cheaper than buying it in um, Nosy B. Nosy B, like the price of everything's expensive compared to the rest of Madagascar. So it does, it does make sense to um, to buy it a couple of hundred kilometers outside, like. But um, being a foreigner, like you just get ripped off on the price. And then obviously to make it worthwhile, you need to buy by buy, buy weight. And then obviously I've got to transport it, which just uses more fuel in the car. So it's kind of a pointless exercise unless you've got a mal of gas with you. And I ain't got nobody with me. I'm on my own. Going from I'm San Anarivu to Nosy B. Stayed in the hotel halfway last night. I've got about 450 kilometers to drive today. I've done about 80 kilometers so far. It's gonna take me all day to drive. Oh, we got a traffic jam going on. Smell all the um, to miss and You can smell all the um, tomato stuff that they use for, for growing the tomatoes, the um, chemicals that they mix. Absolutely stinks of it around here. They've got Belahazu, they've got oranges, they've got dried fish. Bellahazu's cassava. I speak half in Madagascar and half in English and half in French. So, we've living out, out here for like 10 years and not really associating with very many foreigners or, or English speakers at least. I, I've lost half my English, like, I go back to England and speak Malagasy to, the, um, to, the, to my mates and that sometimes. Sometimes I can't remember words, can't remember what things are called. Like um, small stones, they're called kayas here. I think it's a French word, but um, I completely forgot what they're called. I think it's gravel, isn't it? Gravel, is that right? Just, I don't know whether it's age, old age, maybe I'm getting too old for it. My memory's going, my mind's going, my brain's like mush. Look at the state of this road here. Oh my god. Probably about a nine hour drive to do the halfway bit, 18 hours total if you drive constantly. But obviously long way to drive constantly 18 hours so I, I break it up try and break it up if I can it's a 
local taxi bus. They use the, um, the, the vehicle, like the Mercedes Sprinters that come from Europe and that. They use them for the long distance journeys, for like going halfway across the country and that. And then when they get a little bit old, they get retired to work in the forest areas and places like this where you just do like 20 kilometer trips and that. But they constantly break down like, they get the money's worth out of them like they'll run them until like until they're just a rusty bucket basically got up at six o'clock this morning set off early start sun was just coming up as I, as I as i left can't drive on these roads here like of a night it's just too much like i've done it a few times but uh, some of, the, some, of the, some of the bits of road are completely missing, so you can be driving along at 60 kilometers an hour, and if you don't know the road, you can come like literally off the road or into the road, because some, some bits of the road are like one and a half meters deep. It's, it's ridiculous, like. It's expensive to fix um, tarmac roads, I know that. Having a tarmac car park costs a lot of money, like, to build a road. Chinese. Are the, are the contractors for the Malagas. They come here, they fix all the roads, and then they use those nice new roads to take everything out of the country at cheap prices. They buy everything up, all the rock, all the sand, all the fish, everything. Buy it all and they ship it back to China. So obviously it's in their interest to fix the roads. Well, it's busy today on this road, isn't it? Very, very busy. We've got cows and everything all over the place. Cows, goats, people. There's lots of businesses you can set up in Madagascar. I think I um, will do a video next on that what sort of business opportunities there are. Somebody was asking me about the Samba region, or Samba region in, in the north. It's really very similar to this here, as far as I know. I've never been there, but it's it's vanilla country, and there's people there who have got serious, serious money, like, from vanilla, big, big profits. Some of the Malagas are driving around in, in Range Rover Sports and all sorts, like, Nice big houses, lots of money, gold dripping off them. Big, big profits in, in vanilla. Madagascar is uh, the number one vanilla producer in the world. Makes the best quality vanilla. The cows here are worth about, these, these cows that you can see knocking around here, they're worth about, um, let me think, let me think, about $300. But if you go um, to Nosy B, they can be worth $1,000 for a big one. But for this sort of size, like on the right here, it's probably be about, Three hundred dollars, and in this, in the same sort of size like this one here in Nosy B is probably more like about six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. But the big ones, they can be up to a thousand dollars for a massive one. Like so that's why I'm in the business of buying cows and sending them direct to Nosy B. Good business. I make um, about twelve hundred dollars a month. Maybe a little bit more from buying cows 100 kilometers out of Nosy B or in the forest of Ambanza. And I just walk, I haven't walked. I was gonna say I walk them, I don't walk them, do I? No, I definitely don't walk them. But I have, I have lads that walk them back to Nosy B, back to the port of Ambanza and Keith, and then they get on the boat. And off they go to Nosy B to be slaughtered. So there you go, a 
I'll leave this video there and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for giving us a watch. Give us a like, give us a sub if you're not already subscribed. 